How many is so glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Did somebody make you come this morning? Amen. Or did you come because you want to hear from the Lord? Amen. Praise God. We want the presence of the Lord to come down our services today. Touch and bless. Amen. And be real in our lives. Praise God. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we're so glad to be in your house today, Jesus. God, we're so glad, Lord, that we serve you, O living God. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch, Lord, this morning, God, through our worship. God, through the praise, Lord. God, through the preaching of your word, Jesus. God, we've come to magnify you this morning, Lord, to lift you up and to praise you. Hallelujah, Lord. Do a great work this morning, Jesus. A great work, Lord. Amen. Why don't we clap our hands to the Almighty God? You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our
you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad we're sitting close to you. We're close. We're close. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord today. Today we've got a little something different. Uh, we're going to have two of our, uh, our, young, our young preachers. Young preachers come and deliver the word of the Lord. Me and I uh, took a, a vow of commitment when we first started church that we was going to invest in our, our young men and our young ladies, that there's going to be one day that, that uh, whenever that time is, that we will not be here any longer. So we've got to make sure that we invest in the next generation where they can carry the torch, they can carry the word of the Lord, uh, just as, as, as greater as what we are. What, what father or what mother doesn't want their kids to do something greater than what them, what, what they did? So our church is investing, investing into our, to our, uh, to our young people and two fine brethren here today, faithful, loyal, uh, young men that uh, dive into God's word. They love the Lord. They are committed. They're they're faithful to church. They love Jesus. They believe in the apostolic doctrine. They practice righteousness and holiness, and they're actively involved. Uh, you see him on the platform basically every service doing something, getting involved in something. And I, I, I appreciate these young men, uh, that, that their commitment and, and their, their commitment level to church. But, but, but very first, we're going to get him out of the gate. He's ready this morning. I trust that he's prayed and sought God for today's sermon. But Brother Jeffrey Adams, we're going to have him come at this time. Could you give the Lord a praise offering? Day. Let's preach with Brother Jeffrey this morning. First off, I want to give honor where honor is due and also thank my pastor for having faith in me that I'm not going to get up here and just say some crazy stuff because I have the mic and he's going to stop me now. And I also like to give um, my youth leaders honor because they do some awesome stuff with our youth, amen. amen. Our youth group has grown significantly in, since, since I've taken over, and I'm really glad of that. So if you turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins, who took their lamps and went forth to meet him, meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish, their lamps and took, took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. 
But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest, be, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go rather to, to them that sell and buy, your, buy, buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. And pastor would pray over this message. You may be seated. Preventative maintenance is what I'm titling this. Oftentimes when I have talked to people that I used to go to school with about church and where they stand, they say, yeah, I go to a church. Many would say they go to a church two times a year, Christmas and Easter, and what a coincidence Easter is next, next Sunday. I promise I didn't do that on purpose. But aside from just going two times a year, they think, you know, that's all they need. Why should I go to church every Sunday and every midweek service? Does, isn't God all-knowing? Doesn't he know that I go and obviously I believe in him? These are just some questions that I hear often when I've talked to them. If he knows, if, if God knows all, all this, like I said, he obviously knows I believe in him. I, I mean, he's seen me go. And they say that, and then I'll ask them about prayer and all the same stuff that they, that they said about prayer. Yeah, I pray every once in a while. They typically pray more than two times a year, but oftentimes their prayer is just, hey, God, I'm in a thick, I'm in a thick spot. Can you reach down and get me out? So, obviously this, this isn't enough. If you look at the ten virgins with their oil, the, the five foolish brought very little with them, just what... They thought they would, might need, but it turns out they needed more. You can't just, you can't live on, you, you can't live on just the little bit that you've had here and there. And yes, God is all-knowing, and yes, he does know that you've been here before and that you've prayed before. But that time that you prayed and you went to church and you felt God's presence, it isn't enough to carry you. You have to constantly go. You have to constantly be refilled. This place is a place to charge you. This place is to refill you, to keep you going in the world. If you want to be hot for God, you can't take yourself off the bor- off, put yourself on the burner for 10 seconds and take it off three minutes. It doesn't get hot that way. The energy doesn't keep going. And like, like, like a liquid in a burn- on a burner trying to get hot, these virgins, these virgins didn't have a constant supply of oil, just like these people don't have a constant supply of God in their life. So they can't, the, 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 the services that they're going to, the prayer that they're having, isn't enough to keep them going. It isn't, isn't enough to have that constant relationship with God. And some people might think I've been in, like, I, I don't necessarily know where I'm coming. I've been in church all my life, but actually my family was out of church for several years of my childhood, and we didn't start coming back until I was around 13. And we, would, we were that family that would go, you know, two times, three times a year, and Sure, that's great. We're, we still believed in God, right? But we still went to church. We prayed every once in a while. But I can tell you from experience that that going once or twice or three times or whatever it was, I don't remember a thing from it. Because as soon as I got out of service, it was behind me. I, I just, it was as if it didn't happen. So you're not, you're not, there's the forward progress you make in that service, if, if you're putting any effort to make forward progress in it anyway, is gone. There's no forward progress. You're, you're honestly regressing. There's, you're going backwards because you're not making an effort to get further, farther into your relationship with God. So the, that idea that two or three services, at least, at least with me, it's just, it just isn't going to fly. It sounds harsh, but it's not going to fly because I know that mindset. I know that what, what people that do that think. And it's a trap that a lot of our world falls into that, hey, I go to church, yeah, this is cool, but in that trap, and when you're going there, and you're going two services, three services a year, it, it leads you farther, sorry, further down the path to where God doesn't want you to go. Because if you're not constantly seeking God, what is, your, your, 
you're entertaining the things of this world when you're not doing that. And as you're doing that, you're getting pulled farther and farther and farther away. Like for so many times, and I'm sure all of you have, you give Satan an inch, he'll take a mile. You'll end up in places that you never intended to be. And I'm so thankful that we found this church and my mom decided, hey, we're going there whether you like this or not. Because, Lord, I'm almost 20 now. Lord knows where I'd be. And this, that trap is so dangerous. I've seen so many of my friends fall into it because they're just, they just think it's enough. And they're just too stubborn to budge. And I've, reaching, reaching out to those people that think they're doing enough is probably one of the hardest things I have ever experienced. Because they are going to church and they think they're, they are doing enough. And another, another thing that, that, are, that we oftentimes need to employ as preventative maintenance in our salvation is repentance. A lot of people think that, I, I, and I've been questioned with this, well, isn't God's grace enough? It, didn't he die for us to cover our sins? And I'm no, certainly not saying that his grace is not sufficient. It is more than sufficient, and I'm so thankful for it. Thank God that he was willing to forgive all and that he has done so. But if you're not actively repenting, it's, it's, like, it's like being handed a tool and not using the tool. If you're not willing to get down, shed your pride, and lay your sins out before God's feet and say, God, this is what I've done. I'm sorry. If you're not willing to shed that pride, then are you, are you really sorry? And, you, and then you have the people who are like, oh, yeah, God, I'm sorry. And every once in a while, and honestly, what I, what I see that is it's like telling a little child, hey, tell your sister you're sorry for hitting them, and they'll kind of look at them and be like, sorry. And, well, we all know what that will that doesn't mean you're sorry. Do it right. Yeah, I have several sisters, and I see it all the time. So, yes, his blood will cover your sins, but if you aren't willing to repent, if you aren't really willing to get down on your knees and lay it before God, then are you utilizing it? Are you, are you saying, God, yeah, thank you for shedding your blood for me, and I'm going to use it for its intended purpose. Paul said, I die daily. I mean, how do you argue with that? He wrote 14 of the 27 books in the New Testament. That's the majority. I think the guy knows what he's talking about. How many, how many times have I, have I heard that, yeah, God's grace is sufficient? He... Well, basically, I've been told he'll basically turn a, turn a blind eye as long as you've accepted God as your Savior. And, but it's, that's, that's the watered-down, wishy-washy, I-just-don't-want-to-do stuff. I'm not, I, I don't hate those people that say that. I love them to death. But it's, it's, I, I've had a conversation. I've had, actually, this past summer, I get pressed with this a lot by, by someone and I told them, I said, You're, you need to repent daily. You need to repent daily. Do you sin every day? And they said, yes. I, well, of course I sin every day. Everyone sins just about every day. Everyone falls short of the glory of God. I'm like, yeah, exactly. But if you don't do anything, if you're not really putting in an effort, how sorry are you? It's a pride. It's, it's on, repentance to me seems like a pride thing. Are you, willing, are you willing to get down off your high horse and say, God, this is what I've done? Of course he knows what you've done. But... Are you willing to strip off that flesh, which is evil? Your flesh is evil. My flesh is evil. And say, God, this is what I've done. So, with these things, where, is your, where are you at with your preventative maintenance? How, what's your oil level at? Is your oil full? Do you have extra? Are you constantly supplying yourself with that oil? I just, I just wish those people would, 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 would see this. And a lot of them don't know this because they don't read their Bible. And it all comes back to that. And without reading their Bible, without constantly seeking God's face, without going to church, they'll, they'll, they'll never know. And, and that's where our job comes in to tell them. And it, it's, it's, that's one of the hardest things, especially when they think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing.
So, in those cases, you just, I, you just do what you do. You got to do what you got to do. And I've told them, I, I've, I've used Matthew 1 through 12 several times when talking to people, but some of them it reaches, some of them it doesn't, obviously. Some people are just more stubborn and very prideful. So where are you now? Where, where are you? Are you those people that are going to say, yeah, I pray every once in a while. I pray when, when I need it, when, when there's something I, I need to get done or when I'm in a bad situation. I pray that, you're, that everyone in here prays every day. And I mean, it's a, if you're not into that habit, I admit it is hard to, it, it is hard to get into that habit to strip, strip your flesh away and make yourself do it. There are times you have to make, even if you're used to it, you have to make yourself pray. You have to make yourself come to church. But let me tell you, every time you do, when you make, I, I've experienced it, when I make myself pray, when I make myself go to stuff, that's when I receive my biggest breakthroughs. When I have to push through that wall, to get here, to get where I'm going, that's when I just that's when I experience my biggest breakthroughs. So if you want a breakthrough and you feel that wall in front of you, it's time to push through it. It's time to go and bring more oil with you and push through to the end. Because pushing through to the end, you will see your biggest reward in heaven. Man, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man, awesome job. One thing that I like about our, um, uh, let's all stand. One thing I like about our young ministers is, is they learn the value and don't, they learn the value of just not screaming and yelling. You hear me that? I see a lot of young ministers coming up. They scream, they yell, they do all kinds of fancy. It's style, but there's no substance. And one thing that they learn coming to Solid Rock is, is that you got to say something that someone can apply to their life and not just good talking points. I was reminded as he was, as he was talking about uh, uh, having the oil in our life, I was, I was reminded some people don't even know they're, they're running on empty. I was watching a video the other day, and I thought it was, I, I mean, I, I look for stuff to make me laugh just because our world just filled with doom and gloom. And this father was trying to teach a daughter a valuable lesson, so he dropped her off at AutoZone and said, go in there, talk to the people, and your, your turn signal's out. Go in there and ask them for some turn signal fluid. <laughs> and so these... This looked like his, uh, this, this teenage daughter, about 16, 17, and, and her friend go into AutoZone, and they ask him, and so he's got his videotape running. And he, they, they get back in the car, and, and, and she is, I mean, bright red. And he says, what did they say? And she said, well, I asked him, which I said, I need some turn signal fluid. And, and, and he's like, well, what did they say? She said, all they did was start laughing at us. And, he, and, he, and, and she says, why would you do that for? He says, God wanted you to know the difference and what needs fluid and what doesn't need fluid in life. Some people don't know that they're running on E. They don't know, they don't know how to fix a light bulb or put some fluid in it. And, and life has a strange way of giving you some indicators when you need to have a good old oil change in, your, in the spirit, of course. And so thank you, Brother Jeffrey, for, uh, for, for, for preaching the word of the Lord. Thank you.